Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb, and we're going to be talking about a study that uses platelet-rich plasma to help reduce wrinkles. And uh, this is a very common use of PRP. Uh, there's surprisingly very little quality research that's been done on this topic, uh, but you will see clinics all across America offering platelet-rich plasma therapy for wrinkle reduction. So we're going to take a look at an actual study that that uh, tried to see the effects. And uh, Don, can you tell us a, a bit about this study? Absolutely. So this was a small study. Um, it consisted of initially there were actually 20 patients, but then um, four of them dropped out. So I'm just going to be discussing the 16 that stayed for sure. the rest of the study. Um, so there are 16 female Asian patients of average age of around 50. Um, so they have clinical signs of wrinkles um, and darkening uh, skin tone under in the lower eyelid region. Right. So, uh, and this is a fairly common thing that occurs with age. Right. Um, so it was split into two groups, and the the patients received a split face therapy, which is sort of like what we talked about previously with the split head. And, um, so the first group of six patients received. Um, an injection of PRP on one side, and uh, the other side was treated with platelet poor plasma or PPP, right. which is, which can also be uh, derived from using a centrifuge to separate out right. the blood components. Yeah, pa platelet poor plasma is almost like the waste product that you get <laughs> when you produce PRP. So exactly. Typically, when you stratify the the blood and the centrifuge, you're gonna have a layer of platelet poor plasma PPP. Right beneath that is the platelet-rich plasma. Then you've got the buffy coat layer, which has your white blood cells. And then you've got the red blood cells beneath that. So usually the goal is to, to centrifuge everything, siphon off the PPP, and just get that platelet-rich plasma to do an injection. And this study is kind of interesting because they compare the PRP to the PPP. Yeah, I guess it's sort of another type of control. Mm -hmm. However, they have a second group of 10 patients that also received split face therapy. One side of the face was treated with PRP and the other was injected with saline. So maybe it was uh, determining what had more platelets yeah. or I don't really know their reasoning. I don't this, either, especially with such a small sample size. Yeah, like they should have just done PRP and PRP saline. PRP and saline, I think so too, yeah. Um, but they didn't. But so. not, yeah, not to discredit the study. Yeah. Um, so both groups received three treatment sessions at four-week intervals, and they were evaluated three months after the last treatment series. Um, so they were assessed based off a few different factors. So they had a, a self-reported response and a clinical assessment by a blinded dermatologist. Right. So basically this dermatologist looked at before and after photos. He mm -hmm. didn't know who had received what treatment, and then he assessed them on uh, how the wrinkle appearance had improved. Right, yeah. Um, so improvement was shown in, um, in the skin underneath the eyes with PRP over PPP. Right. Um, or s over PPP and saline, right. um, along with a decrease in um, the melanin indices, which they measured by spectroscopy. Okay. And so basically this was just looking at like uh, this darkened pigmentation right. to see if that was reduced. And it, by, and it was in and the it study. And it was, it was. Okay. So reduction in, in wrinkles under the eyes and also a reduction in the darkness under the eyes. And we're seeing that in the PRP group, but not so much in the, the saline and the PPP Exactly. Group. Okay. And uh, they did mention that two, two of the uh, PPP patients also had uh, equal results to the PRP patients, just two of them. However, this could be because there's not really um, uh, standardization across how PRP is prepared. Yeah. Um, also, people's biochemistry is very different. Mm -hmm. They may have, and and um, apparently they also didn't have very advanced signs of wrinkling too. So all of these yeah. factors may have played in. But overall, I think more tests and studies yeah. and a little bit more robust data needs. I think we to, could do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the study is promising. It's a trial. It's just trying to see if there's any validity to this, and it does look like there is. But yeah, as Don is mentioning, if you're seeing similar results in a platelet-poor plasma injection as a platelet-rich plasma injection, that could just come down to what your definition of PRP and PPP exactly. is. You know, especially like the process I mentioned where you're siphoning off the PPP, it's kind of 
up to you to decide when it becomes PPP or PRP, right? There's not a huge difference in terms of coloration. So that, that's a little subjective, and I must admit they did not do a great job of reporting their exact procedures uh, with the PRP exactly. preparation. All right. Well, so, looking forward to more studies. Yeah, hopefully there'll <laughs> be more research. I know it's not going to hold the industry back. We're seeing huge growth in, in the cosmetic sector for PRP, so hopefully uh, we'll see more research to, to back it up. All right, thanks, Don. Thank you.